Hi, good uh, good morning. Could I speak to Kristen, please? This is Kristen. Hi, this is Jason Curtis speaking from South Africa. Hi, how are you? Well, thanks and you. It's good to speak to you. Yeah, you too. What time is it? Where are you? Where uh, are you? It's uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. Um, same day as you, but just a bit later. Oh, okay. That's easy. It's <laughs> the same day. Yeah, yeah, at least it's the same day. That's true. Um, Kristen, as I say, um, I'd, I was lucky enough um, a couple of years ago, well, let's say in 1994, uh, you did an unplugged uh, session at the Tower Records in, uh, on Sunset, um, and I got to see you play there, um, and it was... Uh, oh my goodness, you've been there! <laughs> I, was, uh, I was actually on, on, on holiday at the time, and uh, um, so I was out there for a couple of months, and it was... Uh, I think it was possibly my highlight. You and John Cale were my highlights with that trip. <laughs> oh, aren't you sweet? I remember that in store. Was a cellist there? That's correct. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> <Get> around. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Story of my life. But, uh, <laughs> but more importantly, let's, uh, uh, let's talk about you. Um, congratulations on the new album. Thank you very much. Um, I think it's, uh, personally, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great album, but that's just me being biased, of course, um, but I can be. <laughs> it's nice of you to be that biased. <laughs> Everybody was. I'm sure. Um, now, it's so interesting to me, I mean, obviously, uh, throwing muses are, are, no, are no longer, and uh, obviously, unfortunately, people will always reference that, but it's not an unfortunate thing. But interesting for me uh, was Kristen Hirsch, and throwing muses was that was that a difficult, uh, a difficult thing to to balance those two personalities while the two were still uh, very much in play for you. Um, the song kind of told me what to do uh, as far as their um, production approach. I, I tend not to um, want. Uh, <laughs> that much attention so <laughs> I'm kind of a shy person so I don't think I would have invented a solo career <laughs> um, I really missed my band but um, the, there were a bunch of songs that really wanted to be treated as simply as possible so when I played those it felt right to be alone playing a little piece of wood and uh, when I played the music songs, it felt right to have all that sound going on. Um, personally, I don't really change that much depending on what I'm doing because um, I, my personality is so flimsy that I can leave when I'm playing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. And um, as I say, you and uh, your your stepsister Tanya Donnelly, um, you know. Actually, when I when I sort of think back, because I've I've sort of uh, been a, a 4AD fan uh, to say for um, I think as long as I, I sort of keep more longer than I care to remember. But uh, you know, in in comparison to uh, especially your you know your solo careers, um, they that they tend to sort of move um, on on common you know, or in, move in a similar way in the sense that. Uh, Tanya is now enjoying a, a, a solo career, as are you, um, after having been a part of, uh, you know, bands that were sort of very influential, especially in sort of the, the late 80s and even early 90s. Do you sort of feel that way? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, Belly was, was different um, from the incarnation of the muses that just ended. It was... Billy was so uh, shiny, <laughs> pop with um, you know a commercial focus, huh. and uh, so she's leaving that um, to do something that is very different. But the muses were kind of you know trying not to succeed, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and. Uh, and I still am following that philosophy <laughs> okay. that I'm making the records I want to make and I um, 
I won't play the game and hope for, say, a radio hit or because I don't want everything else I do to be considered a failure. <laughs> so I, I don't have a single, and I'm not making a video. And um, It feels like being in Throwing Users, I'm just kind of by myself. I think he is is really in the middle of a, a big hit career-wise. Um, it's great for her. I'm, I'm really happy that he has a record that sounds like her and... She's touring with her husband in the band. That's, that's great. It's a good lifestyle change, I think. Mm, mm, mm. And for you, as I say, now with uh, with you now being an an entity truly unto yourself, is is that the place that you sort of were, were looking to to be in? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I don't. I'm not going to complain about it because I'm lucky that anyone wants to listen to songs I write. Uh-huh. But I, uh, I miss my band. I miss the sound of it. I miss my friends. Yes. Um, and and yet, this is a nice adult way to work. Uh-huh. My my husband, children, and and even dog uh-huh. tour with me. Okay. And we tour in a car. And we just need one hotel room. I don't pay other musicians. Um, you know, I don't have any equipment, really. It's hard. I can play at 8 o'clock at night in theaters instead of midnight in rock clubs. So, you know, it, it's nice and quiet. But I, uh, it's not fun. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> it should be, shouldn't it? <laughs> well... I like music, but it's not fun, capital F, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. telling myself in jokes and stuff doesn't really have to <laughs> hanging with my buddies. <laughs> yes. but, but now, what would you sort of want to change uh, about that? Would you would you want sort of uh, throwing muses to, to, to sort of be reborn, or would it be something that you would just take on? Personally, and maybe rebuild something around you rather than around, um, you know, um, something that was already there. I, uh, I, I, I want my band back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, would wait to see what kind of material I, I had. I started writing, you know, when I start writing again. Yes. And um, see how it needs to be treated, mm-hmm. and just work from there. Mm-hmm. I just, I love those bright, loud colors that have and in paint. Mm, 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 yeah. 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 I'm sorry. No, no, fine. No problem. Um, now, um, interesting as well, well, just a, a question, obviously. Um, 4AD, was, was, was that a good place, and is it a, a good place for you to be, do you think? It is, although... Uh, I've been there longer than most of people who yeah. are the late. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's um, gone through many shifts, and and yet they have maintained their philosophy, which is that music matters. And and I can't tell you how rare and almost bizarre that is. Record company say that reprise is another label. That's where. We were on repeat in America. Yeah. Uh, that just said, throwing music should be making records, throwing music doesn't have to sell records. Really? Which is really admirable, mm-hmm. although after a while you can't pay the rent anymore. <laughs> that True. Real philosophy. Mm-hmm. And, and in the States now, with uh, with Strange Angels, is that being done through four ideas, or is it again through, uh, through a, a subsidiary? Um... This is through Ryko Disc okay. and Throwing Music. The yes, 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 yeah. Now, why is that actually for, you know, for America? Um, why are we on Ryko Disc? Mm, yes. <laughs> because um, we didn't think we were a major label band. And uh, even when we had a successful record like university, uh-huh. we had such a huge debt that uh, we didn't make a penny off of it. It just 
serve to pay off the debt. So we wanted to start over again. We left Warner Brothers and started over at a smaller indie that can uh, actually work a record without risking millions of dollars, right. millions of dollars that it costs to run a big machine like Warner Brothers. Mm, 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 mm. Now, obviously, the success that you had uh, with Hips and Makers, are you, are you, and you know, do you anticipate? Do you want uh, the kind of success from, you know, from Strange Angels as you had from from Hips and Makers? I don't really see that happening because Michael Sipe isn't seen on the show. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, I don't really need to sell a lot of money in order to make enough. Mm. To make another record. Mm. So I'm not record for to make enough yeah. Yeah. Um because like I said, I just have no expenses. Mm, 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 mm. And I have no debt. Which is good. Yeah, yeah that's fine. All, all I want to be is a working musician. I don't need to make any false friends with singles and Yes. Yes, yes. Now, as I say, as far as as far as the new album is concerned, what what does it actually sort of say about you, you know, if, if you look at the album as a, as a whole. I, I think there's an interesting sweetness to it um, that people don't always give me credit for. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, it's a very positive and, um, and yet complex. I have a lot of respect for happiness, uh-huh. which I don't really share with other people who think they should only write songs when they're miserable. <laughs> yeah, true. And so sometimes people will hear a song that isn't simple or easy or stupid and assume that it must be about the darker aspects of humanity. And I don't feel that way. I, I think we should all be trying for joy. You know, the <laughs> yeah. it's incredible, how, again, how rare and bizarre that is yeah. in the world. Yeah. People want to be happy. I certainly do. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it comes across, I think, on, you know, on, a, on I think on, on all levels, that sort of where you're taking it. And it was interesting to me when um, when the album was, uh, when the new album was, was released, uh, a, a lot of people weren't sure how to approach it because it was so acoustic. And the funny thing is that people associate acoustic um, with, with with being uh, slightly somber or even ballad, you know, I mean, as much, or, you know, something that would be not upbeat and happy. Um, but then, as I say, when, when you revisit the album, then you actually find out what it is that you're trying to say. Uh, what, how was it actually received um, in the States? Did people, uh, were, you know, was the response good? Yeah, uh, and they seem to get that um, positive thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes in, in Europe, they will project a lot onto it because it's out of context for them. Yeah. And I, they don't really seem to mind that difficulty, but I kind of do. Mm-hmm. I think, well, you should, you should know that maybe... You're projecting a lot onto this, <laughs> yeah. and that what you think about this record says more about you than it does about me. Yeah, yeah. But in America, I think I'm speaking their language a little. Okay, and um, as I said, I, I keep on making these comparisons, and you must. Uh, uh, I apologize, but uh, as I say, having <laughs> having been a, um, a fan of yours for a long time, uh, you know, you you tend to carry a lot of baggage with you, which <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> which I do. It's much appreciated in my case. <laughs> um, as I say, you uh, share uh, or you, you have shared similar praise to you know with the work obviously that you've done uh, in your solo work, but more again say with Throne Muses um, as that of Frank Black in a way, as far as with the Pixies were concerned, because you were, you know, you, um, you are always referred to as being one of those, uh, you know, you personally, and again, being responsible for, you know, a, a lot of what happened in, you know, uh, musically, um, uh, you know, in the, again in the 80s and again in the, in the early 90s. Um, you know, um, would, would, do you sort of uh, see, your, see yourself in the sense that you've achieved um, a similar kind of well, almost a cult following with throwing muses, but now obviously a new um, sort of vital following with um, 
with your solo work, but as I say, Throwing Muses very much has a has a cult following, as does, you know, the, the Pixies. Do yeah. you sort of agree with that or not? Uh, um, I, uh, I was, you know, listening to underground music or uh, like the, our heroes when we were teenagers starting the muses were bands like X and the Violent Femmes and the Minutemen and the Husker Du and they were all underground bands who were not played on the radio and weren't trying to be played on the radio and never expected to be played on the radio so we didn't either we we didn't even really use the vocabulary word cult because we just knew that we had a, a finite number of listeners and always would um, and that we weren't going to play the game because it was already too late for us. We already had fallen in love with music and wanted a high every time we played and every time we listened and um, it was too late to go back and try to learn to be stupid. <laughs> so, yeah, I, we we had always planned on that um, uh, status of underground musician, what they used to call alternative, and yeah. um, and it worked for us. We, like I said, we we didn't make any false friends. We didn't have a bunch of shitheads at our shows, yelling for the single. And um, now I think I, I'm still very much an underground musician because it's it's not always the easiest thing for listeners to well, <laughs> hear this, I, I guess, so, or, you know, apparently. Well, no, I mean, I, I think it's probably, you know, the, the, the funny thing is that there's a, I always sort of associate good and bad um, with 4AD in the sense that 4AD has got a name, um, or, you know, is known for, you know, for, for taking on um, you know, more ambitious projects than, say, major labels would. Um, and with that, you carry the baggage of, of the fans uh, that follow the label as a whole. Um, and then you, you tend to get pigeonholed, you know, pigeonholed as being, you know, being one of those artists. Meanwhile, you know, um, you know Kristen Hirsch has got a personality all of her own. And sometimes, I, well, you know, I always sort of look at it and think, maybe um, that suffers because of, um, you know, because of the association that is, you know, given to it. Because I mean, as you know, the industry is famous for pigeonholing. Um, right. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I had never heard of 4AD when we signed with them, and um, I didn't understand that there was such a thing as a label with fans. Yes. And I certainly never thought anyone would associate us with bands like Ed Can Dance or the Costco Twins. Um, and I, I am still intrigued when they do <laughs> because uh, I don't think we have I just felt very American compared to them Yes. Um, but the Pixies I, I can understand yes. and we all played together and toured together and we were friends and I don't know if I'd say we sounded alike but I guess the thrust was similar mm, 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 mm. But I, mean, so I don't mind when it's the Pixies and, um, but I, I sometimes think maybe you didn't get it if you think we we are like dead dance. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's no assimilation there. No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but um, kick in the band, I guess. That's about as far. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, true. I think, as I say, I mean, um, I think what what uh, you know what the label has achieved from the likes of your solo work and, and even uh, that of Mojave Three and uh, and bands like that um, has actually benefited the label. I think. Um, to, to a great extent uh, I think in recent years especially where people were saying okay well you know one can only sort of take so much of Dead Can Dance and Cock um, you know we want something yeah. you know something fresh and new which you you know which you brought to the table uh, you know and I think and there's, it, there's no house sound now which is refreshing yeah yeah I mean if you think about it you actually um, were part of was partly responsible for, for sort of reinventing that terrible word alternative music. Um, mm. You know, from the typically English alternative to this whole American alternative and actually making people look up and, and notice that America had had equally as much to offer. 
Oh, right, yeah. I, I don't think that um, the underground is going to be ignored at large. You know, once punk happened and everyone realized that it wasn't going to happen, <laughs> yeah. at least in top 40, <laughs> yeah. um, they, they kind of um, gave up looking for new styles and just left that to the underground. And that's disappointing in, in some respects because there's a whole, a few generations now that will never hear their own sound. Yes. But um, that said, the, the uh, carrot that was held up in front of bands after Nirvana yeah. um, became huge playing the sound that we'd all been playing since we were... Um, in high school, um, made a lot of fans water down their approach to songwriting and playing. And um, I think it's better now that um, that Top 40 is so terrible. Yeah. Because the underground is really strong. You know, no one thinks for a minute that their good band is going to get played on the radio. <laughs> and they're right. <laughs> So they become experimental, stylistically. They write songs that mean something to them, and, and that's great. It makes for a really strong underground, and maybe more people will be attracted to it when they realize that radio sucks so bad. Mm -hmm. But now, if, if uh, as I say, Strange Angels all of, all of a sudden became this, this huge hit um, and, uh, and, and became a, a billboard um, a billboard album in the sense that it crashed into the top 20 would, would that would that be would you be happy for that in the sense of you know it being understood to that extent or would you are you happier having your music understood by you know a, a smaller audience um I don't think it's a big worry for what <laughs> I don't really see that happening but um I think that I wouldn't be convinced that a lot of people got it. I, I would think that they were tricked into it by hearing the most attractive song on the radio or, or something. And then the next time I made a record, it wouldn't, it, you know, maybe it wouldn't have an attractive song on it and it would be considered a failure. Um, I, I like that people give me the benefit of the doubt for, you know, because I never sell any records, they figure I'm doing this for another reason. Which is true, and and uh, I, I can really use that. <laughs> so I, I can tour whether I have a record out or not, um, and I can not sell many records, and no one really cares because they don't expect me to anyway. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm not trying to be obscure or confusing to people either. I wouldn't not want them to listen to it. I just I don't think I'd really be fooled by that. <laughs> but now you, you you mentioned that you're doing this for um, another reason. Um, obviously, besides the you know the, the commercial potential or whatever. What what is the reason? I just like music. Mm. I think it's a good thing. Mm. <laughs> it's a great place to be, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes I'm getting better at hanging out there. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't whine about it so much. Because uh, I mean, you know, I, I think a lot of a, a lot of people would, um, you know, would say, well, then, you know, what is the? But once you've cleaned yourself out, you know, enough to hear real songs with pure song voices that could speak to anyone, then they, those songs want to get out of your house and and uh, go play to other people. Just just like children, I guess they. You can't keep them in your closet. And it becomes an exercise in frustration. And and if you had to sort of sum up what your you know who who it is that you are um, appealing to, especially say with, with with the new album, you know, in putting the songs together, were you sort of aware of um, of what hips and makers have done, um, and obviously take out the Michael Stipe equation because I, I actually don't sort of equate that to the album success although you know <laughs> I think it's just that was very nice of you <laughs> but um, if, um, 
you know, did you reference the last album um, in putting this album together just from a musical point of view and sort of things, thinking to yourself, well, um, that worked musically. Um, you can still write what you want lyrically, but um, you know, were you sort of trying to touch those people again, or was it just sort of a, another chapter? Um, I I don't think I really knew what I was doing when I made Hips and Makers. I I was feeling my way around the studio um, without a, a major production plan because I had never made an acoustic record before. So this time I was really working um, with the benefit of experience and uh, and yet trying to focus on these songs and how different they were from the Hips and Makers songs. And, and that said, I, I just work in a vacuum as far as I'm concerned. I don't assume that anyone is going to hear what I'm doing. <laughs> so when I go to work, and the muses were this way too, we, we would just have the song there and it would ask for little treatments here and there or a different um, performance. And, and then we, we sleep and <laughs> we start over the next day. And, and when you're done, you suddenly begin thinking that, oh, you know, it's this living thing and it's going to have to go off and grow up now. And it begins with the record label and the mix. And it ends at the end of a tour when you've given it away to a lot of people and a lot of people have filled their house with it. And it comes back years later, all grown up. and. Mm-hmm and better for it. Mm-hmm. Is it. Is it difficult in sort of writing a song and then putting it out, um, you know, that, it, that the ownership is no longer yours, and you know, it's something that you struggled with and now you, you know, you're putting it out there? Yeah, um, it can be, although I quit being overly sensitive about the stuff that is pure song voice. I realized that if I'm having a problem with other people listening to it, then maybe it's a little bit too much of a diary page and it, I didn't leave the song alone. Or I didn't get my self-expression out in time. <laughs> and those songs I tend not to publish. Uh, 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 uh. Well, Chris, I know that I'm actually running on empty at the moment as far as my time is concerned, but um, could, could I ask you one last favor, uh, if I may? Yes, of course. Um, I'm going to be putting this uh, interview um, out on a show that I do uh, for College Radio. Um, so um, with, whether you like it or not, 360,000 people are going to hear this interview over the next uh, three to four weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't swear. <laughs> no, 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 believe me, it's... That's the beauty of college radio. People, people don't have opinions on, on things like that. Yeah, anyway, so. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we, we're we getting there slowly but surely in our, in our, in our small way, you know. Um, but the um, the, uh, the name of the show is uh, really cliched, I'm afraid, but um, it's a show that I do, and it's called The Cutting Edge. Um, so if you could maybe say something like, hi, this is Kristen Hirsch, um, and... Uh, you're listening to The Cutting Edge. Would that be okay? <laughs> That's pretty easy. I think I can handle that. <laughs> okay. My husband did a show on MTV called that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, start, I'll start paying him royalties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anytime? Yeah, whenever you're ready. Hi, this is Kristen Hurst, and you're listening to The Cutting Edge. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Sure. It's, uh, it's in America, you have all these call letters and sentences and names you have to say. No, no. Especially yeah. someone with no brain. <laughs> you, you definitely have to give yourself a, a, a little bit more credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on that. Yeah, you definitely. I have a huge ego next time we talk. Well, I, well, you should. I mean, you you know, you've got you definitely have enough uh, enough behind you to to have a, a bigger ego than 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 most out there, I can promise you that much. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Maybe I'll get one someday. Oh, sure. But thank you very much again. Um, it's, it's been a... It was lovely speaking with you. Lovely. It's, sad. it's, it's, it's been a pleasure, man. I hope that I um, I do sort of venture out um, again to the States uh, soon enough to actually see you play again because uh, um, 
the set was far too short. I, I think I need at least two hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, come in, introduce yourself if that ever happens. Thank you very much. But, uh, Take care. Yeah, have a good day. Thank you again. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye now.